The title that we are going to be examining scripture this morning on is Your reward will determine your investment now. Make sure you understand my words in this context. Your reward will determine your investment now in the kingdom of God and in the service of God. In Matthew chapter 13 verse 44, Jesus says something there. That the kingdom of God is like treasure hidden in a field which when a man found it. How many of you here like to look for treasure? You know what treasure is? Treasure. How many of you here, if somebody were to offer you $200,000, you would get it? How many of you? Put your hand up. Would you get it? Yes. The brother over there, wouldn't. he didn't put his hand up. Okay, <laughs> I know him very well. <laughs> Jesus is saying that the kingdom of God is like treasure. If the only treasure we understand today is money, it's like uncountable amount of money hidden in the field which a man who was looking for treasure, when he found it, he went and sold everything that he had and to come and to buy that field. Now in our days today, oil, where we get gasoline, is treasure. And we have lots of it in North Dakota here. If you had a plot of land, and the people who survey the land say, oh, there is trillions of dollars in that land. Who wants to buy that land for $50,000? Would you want to buy that land? Interact, please. Don't be scared. Would you want to buy that land? I will buy the land because I want the trillions of dollars that are going to come from that land. We are talking here about the kingdom of God the greatest treasure. See, it is like the greatest treasure which a man, when he found it, he went and sold everything he had to buy that field. Have you come to a point in your life that you have embraced the kingdom of God like that? 31 years ago, God touched my life snatched me out of this world and made me his child. And I saw this verse of scripture and I saw this book. This is the greatest treasure. This is the greatest treasure. And unless you actually know and you understand, unless the spirit of God has actually touched you, you will not recognize this treasure. You will continue to hunt for treasure everywhere else in the world. What I want to say is this, how you invest in the kingdom of God now is determined by the price or the reward that you are looking for. So I'm saying that your reward that you're looking for will determine how you will invest now. Everybody invests today, people invest in Wall Street. People, Several kinds of investment. You have invested in things. And when you are investing, you are expecting what? Profits, right? You are expecting what? A reward. You are expecting dividends. And if there is an investment opportunity that has big dividends, you want to get everything, even borrow money, to invest in that investment. Understand my words in context. We are talking about investing in the kingdom of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, Paul says, to every one who is a believer, that stand firm in your service for the Lord, for you know that every single thing you do in the Lord will not go in vain. It will be rewarded let me put it this way. Do you know that Jesus talked a lot about money, more than he talked about heaven? Did you know that? Did you know that? 
Because money is the greatest competitor to God for worship. You know, in, in Matthew chapter 4, 1 to 11, Jesus was tempted. And the third temptation, I joke about it this way. He took Jesus up to America and said, bow before me and you will rule the world. Don't go to the cross. And Jesus said, no, I want to bow before my father. And then he says there that Jesus loved him so that he can test him at an opportune time. And when you go over to Matthew 6, Jesus is talking about treasure. We're talking about the kingdom of God as the greatest treasure. He said, lay up for yourself treasure in heaven where moth and yeah, moth don't destroy. For where your treasure is, there your heart is. If your treasure is in Wall Street, as you sit here, that's what you're thinking. If your treasure is your house, as you sit here, that's what you're thinking about. If your treasure is your job, as you even sit here, that's what you're thinking about. If your treasure is on your beauty, as you sit here, that's what you're thinking about. If your treasure is your handsomeness, as you sit here, that's what you're thinking about. But if your treasure is the kingdom of God, you are sitting here today thinking about holiness, spirituality, how you can grow from glory to glory. Where your treasure is, then your heart will be. And in that context, he said, you cannot, you cannot serve both God and money. You can't serve two masters. You will either be dedicated to one and ignore the other or dedicated to the other and ignore the other. You're probably be like, wait a minute, pastor. I'm going to come to that wait a minute. I know what you're thinking. Do you mean I should quit my job? What should you forego in life? I, for, I've, I, I forgot a lot in life to where I am today, spiritually speaking. And I know the price. I know the reward. It is incomparable. Jesus said in, my, in John chapter 14, 1 to 4, that trust in God, trust also in me. In my father's house is what? Now, understand this, and I'm not going to go into it today. Heaven is a real place with houses. The kingdom of God is a real place with real houses. And Jesus is preparing houses. Now, let me bring it to you this way. Here in Grand Forks, some people live in trailer homes, right? You know what a trailer home is? Yeah. Some people live in really dilapidated apartments, right? Some live in good apartments. Some live in older houses. Some live in decent houses. In America, some people live in $300,000 houses. Some live in $500 million uh, uh, dollar houses. Some live in $1 million mansions. Some five million dollar mansions, some ten million dollar mansions. If those mansions were in heaven, which one would you want to live in? Which one would you want to live in? Fifty million. Fifty million dollar mansion, somebody went beyond me. Get it real. That's for real. If you understand what for real means, but which mansion you are going to live in when you enter the kingdom of God will depend upon your investment now in the kingdom of God. You may take all your time in this life and invest in your house and invest in your job and invest on all those things. If you are not investing in the kingdom of God, you are going to end up in a trailer home in heaven. Let me assure you that. If you want a $50 million mansion, you must invest now in the kingdom of God. You must invest now in the service of God. What you expect, the reward you expect will determine your investment 
now. First Corinthians chapter 2, 9 and 10. Paul says this. I has not seen, no ear heard, nor has it entered the mind of man. What things God has prepared for you. I, I can take two hours here to paint the picture of the kingdom of God as it would arrive upon this earth. It was still not maybe get across to you. But here's one thing he says in verse 10. Most often people quote that verse and don't go to verse 10. It says, but he said, I has not seen, no ear heard, nor has it entered the mind of man, but God has revealed it to us in the spirit. So if you are not in the spirit, you're not even getting me now. You won't. And you will never. What I'm going to say now will not make sense to you. It's like, Pastor, come on. I want to get out here and go to my job. Actually, I have to work at 1 o'clock today. I could earn some money. We all need money. We all need these things. So if he said, he has revealed these things to us in the spirit. For the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Do you believe that? Amen. Do you believe that as the man of the spirit, you can see beyond? You can see like John in the book of Revelation. John saw everything and he was trying to describe it. He said, it is beautiful. It is a wonderful city. The street looks like it is gold. Everything in its place is city for square. That is not child talk. It is reality. It is, and you can only understand that in the spirit. Let's begin. Back to basics. How do you get there? How do you even get to invest? The kingdom of heaven. What is it? Matthew 13. The kingdom of heaven was planted on this earth by Jesus. It is growing on this earth as the church, filled with both good and evil, and still evil in the world. And as we reach the end, everything evil and sinful on this planet earth will be wrapped up, removed, and burned. And the rest of this earth will exist as the kingdom of God on earth. Will you be there? Now you see, John says that the city is so beautiful, so righteous, that nothing unclean can enter there. So let's begin where we begin. How can I get into the kingdom of God? Repent, believe in Jesus, then you become a new creature. Nicodemus, a religious leader, will come to Jesus and say, Hey, man, you're a great preacher. You, you do some great miracles. And nobody can do this except he's from God. And Jesus is like, man, let me tell you this. Except a man is born again. He cannot. He cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot understand the kingdom of God. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. And you have to know and understand that when you are born again, you are transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of God, which is the kingdom of Jesus. And even though you still exist on this planet Earth, you don't belong to the world. You are different in every way possible. In fact, the scripture says you have become a new creation. And you belong to a new world. You belong to the realm where Jesus is king. Where you are, even though you are seated here, you are also seated at the right hand of majesty in heaven. The greatest place that you could be exalted to. And you must live like you belong there. Different from this world. Different from this world. Jesus would say, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Your life must demonstrate. Ephesians 4, 
beginning from verse 17. It's a long passage there that I call the mirror. The mirror. Before I read that, 1992 was the year that God called me, that I experienced that power of the Spirit to transform my life. The brother said there, today is a day of restoration and a day of transformation. Let this day not pass you. If you are still like, um, what am I doing? Don't let it pass you. I cried out that morning to God and say, I am found in a deep pool of sin. Pull me out. Make me your child. And boy, did everything change. Yeah. Everything changed. Second Corinthians 5.17 was the verse that we meditated on that morning that said, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed. Behold. <laughs> Behold. All things have become new. Then you go here to Ephesians. And from verse 17. He says, so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. You must not live as the Western world do. Did you hear me? Yes. You must not live as the Western world do. And what do they do? They are futile in their thinking because of the hardening of their hearts, because of the ignorance of God, and because of that, they have given themselves over to all signs of wickedness, sensuality, and a continual lust for more. Are you hearing me? Do you know what that says? Anybody knows that thing? Anybody can re recite that? Stand up. Anybody can recite that? Paul says, in the last days, if you are doubting that we are living in the last days, you may pack and go home. We are. In the last days, terrible times will arise. Men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Oh. It's quiz time now. Tell me this morning, when you were dressing up for church, what were you thinking? About holiness or how you will appear to people? Were you thinking about holiness? How you will draw people to Jesus or how you will draw people to you? Talk to me, sister, brother. Sometimes you only think about sisters, brothers do the same. Men and women will be lovers of themselves. Selfie, social media, everything. Jesus, we don't even know who you are. Get out of here. We will come to church and pay some lip services. And then we'll go home and do our thing. I didn't bring that. It's right there. Men will be lovers of themselves. And there's a lot of things that are listed there. You can read it. Or oh, you should have known it already. And be practicing it. They will have the form of godliness. They will look like they're believers. They will look like they're Christians. They will go to church and sing. They will roll on the ground. They can even speak in tongues also. But they don't acknowledge the power. Of, of God that has to work through them. Verse 20 says, You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught. You were taught with regard to your former way of life. Your former way of sinfulness. Your former way of wickedness. Your former way of unrighteousness. What were you taught about? Or oh, perhaps you're being taught today about that old way of life. To put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. They are not just desires, they're deceitful. And to be made new. In the art, it's all here. Be made new in the attitude of your mind. It's all here. It's what you are thinking. It's what you are thinking. It's what you have been thinking. It's where your mind is. Paul will warn us in 2 Corinthians 11 that I have espoused you to one husband who is Christ. And I want you to stay a virgin. But I am so afraid that just like Eve 
was led astray in her mind. It's all here. The game starts and ends in the mind. What are you thinking? For what man thinks, so is he. Or as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Having a form of godliness, denying the power thereof, loving self more than God. It's not like you don't love God. You love God, but you love self more. That is why Jesus, when he gives that instruction about exclusive discipleship, see, anyone who comes to me, if you don't hate your wife, your husband, your son, your father, and even your own self, that is the last idol that stands between you and God. Self. Self. Ego. Because you want to do for you. Not for Jesus. Jesus is jealous. He wants to be number one. And if he's not number one, he's nothing. Mm -hmm. You can play around if he is not number one. He's nothing. That's why he says in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Everything else, like I think I said it sometimes here, something. All these things will be added to you. Amen. You have to do it the right way. The kingdom first. Kingdom and its righteousness. Yes, indeed. We are living in the last days. I have several videos that I've put on my YouTube on that. So I'm not going to do that. I will persuade you to go and listen. Ask me questions. But the reality is, we are living in the last days. I can take my calendar out for the past 20 years. There is a transition. There is a transition from the old to the new. And the old does not want to give way. But Jesus says in Revelation 21, verse 5, beginning verse 4, there's going to be a time, pretty soon, there will be no more tears, or crying, or weeping, or dying. For the whole order of things. God is about to say a word. And he said it from the beginning. God is about to say a word. That let there be light. Let there be light. And all the wicked darkness of this world will disappear. If you don't believe it, I share. And that's true. This book is true. The Bible, I have proven it that it is supernatural. And so what it says is true. Much has been going on in the world. There is an overlap. No, there is a certain generation that Jesus said it will not pass until the end comes. We are in that generation. You can see it if you want to see it. If you have the spiritual eyes, you will see it. But if you don't, it is just anything as usual. It's just anything as usual. And the plan of the devil was accelerated by the so-called whatever virus, we're gonna be on YouTube, so I'm gonna <laughs> censor myself. Since 2020, the spiritual dimension has been shifted and the plane is about to land. Amen. The plane is about to land. If you, Jesus said, when you see all these things, Lift up your eyes for your redemption draw it near. Redemption draw it near. Look to the one who said that people are panicking of the things that are happening. We are not yet out of uh, that thing, pandemic, or oh, whatever. And there is a war in the Ukraine. Now there is a war in the Middle East. There is this country coming in, everything coming in and coming in and coming in and coming in, coming in. Some people are going to say, well, it's always been like that. War has always been like that. But if you understand the prophetic timetable, you will know what I'm saying. Yeah. But no despair. No despair at all. Because Jesus gives us hope as things are shifting away. Second Peter 3. You see, if you know that this world is going to disappear, and it's only when you have faith to know for sure that the Bible says, what the Bible says is true, that this earth will disappear, and all the elements will melt. You know, I did do a video. You know, people are afraid of 
Third World War, nuclear Armageddon. I didn't read on what I said, and I'm saying it again. Only God can pull the trigger on a nuclear war. Only God can. Only when he wants to, if he wants to. Because he will remove evil from this world instantaneously. That's why I want to plead with you. If you are still hanging around with sinfulness, adultery, idolatry, fornication, lying, cheating, and stealing, you are wasted. I really didn't have time much to talk to you now because that is the old way. That darkness. If it's in your life, you don't get it rid of it now because you have the freedom to or not to. And I can't force you. That darkness will be removed. First Peter 3. Uh, 2 Peter 3, verse, uh, um, verse 13 says that since everything will be destroyed like this, we there's always a contrast. When you read the Bible, when you see the word but, always pay attention. Say so this world is going to be destroyed, but we, we, we who have the spirit, we who have the first fruits of the spirit are looking forward to the kingdom of righteousness. We are looking forward to the kingdom of righteousness where Jesus is king of kings and lord of lords. And he better be king in your life. He better be lord in your life. He better be. We're looking forward into the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness will disappear. Jesus says, Revelation 21, 5, He who sits on the throne says, Behold, I make all things new. The old will disappear. Don't mind. They may have the best nuclear weapons. They may have every arsenal. They may have the billions to do anything. But I have no dollar. But they will run to fly because I got the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Amen. I got the King of Kings. But you have to make a choice, my brothers. You, have, my sisters too. Yes, my brothers and sisters. You have to make a choice. In first, in, in Second Peter three verse nine here, I'm going to read it to you. I said, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness, he is patient with you. God is patient with you. If you are still living in your sins, God is patient with you. Not wishing you to perish, but to come to repentance, which is the doorway into the kingdom of God. But now, and when it arrives in fullness. The choice is yours. You have the power. Uh, shouldn't I say God has the power? No. This is the time where you have the power. You have the power to choose your destiny. The kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of hell. If it's a kingdom, it's going to be chaos. Real chaos. You have the choice. That is the place where you have the power to choose life or to choose death. To choose Jesus or not to choose him. To choose the kingdom of light or to choose the kingdom of darkness. But you know what God's wish for you is? He does not want anyone to perish. He does not want anyone to perish. So how can you invest now? How can you invest now? I said from the beginning, that the reward or the dividends that you expect at the end will determine how you can invest now. And right now, I want to assume that I have already covered the subject of how you can enter the kingdom of God. Repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you are born again, transformed of the Spirit, and you are ready to enter the physical kingdom of God when it arrives. Amen. It starts with repentance. But as a believer, talking to you believers now, if you're still not an unbeliever, you can still listen, but I'm talking to believers now. How can you invest for the greatest dividend? If you want a $50 million mansion, $10 million mansion, how can you invest now? There's two things. Well, practically, number one, spiritual growth. You have to grow spiritually. First Peter 2, 1-2 says, Get rid of any wicked sinful things 
and like newborn babies. Any little baby in here? You know when the baby wants to eat, right? They cry. They cry. Mommies, you know that. They cry, they cry. Are you crying like a baby for the word of God to take root in your heart? Are you crying like that? Are you crying like that for the word of God to take root in you? In Hebrews 5, 11 to 14, Paul is crying about the people he's writing to. He's saying this. I could have taught you greater things, but I can't because you still are unlearned. You have not grown spiritually. I can't give you meat with bones. You're just going to break your teeth. You are still fed with milk because you have refused to grow. Many believers refuse to go. And I want to tell you this. Repenting and believing in Jesus is 5% of your journey with him. Did anyone hear me? Repenting and believing in Jesus is 5% of your journey. The rest of the 95%, you have to grow spiritually in the word of God and also it's not either or, and also in the service of God in a local assembly like this. It is in the word of God that you grow, and it is in service that you grow. That is how you invest. And because you have the freedom, I can't force you to read your Bible. There may be two of you there. One of you has read through the Bible. You may be a believer for 10 years, you've never read through the Bible. Don't think that when we go to heaven, we're going to be sleeping in the same apartment. No, 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 no. The other one who is growing and investing in the kingdom may have the $50 million and you may end up in a trailer home if all you say, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus, that's enough for me. Okay, welcome to your trailer home. I'm going to my Mac mansion. For real. For real. I say, um, this book is treasure. Don't look at my Bible. It's so old and I've written it on it so much, I can't even use another one. <laughs> because I use it so great. I tell you that God has a check for you in this book. For real. And you have to claim it by putting the puzzle together. And when you're putting a piece of puzzle together, my daughter likes to put puzzles together a lot. It takes time. You are like, what am I doing? And at the end, when you're done with the puzzle, it's like, really? That was easy. Well, because you put it together. So, God has a check for you here. When Jesus came into this world, God said, I have a check for you, son. Listen carefully. He said, I have a check for you, son. And that check, on that check is inheritance of the wealth of the world. Inheritance of the world of America. Inheritance of the world of China. Inheritance of the world of Russia. Inheritance of all the mineral resources. But you have to sign the check and you will sign it with your death on the cross. He said he humbled himself and died on the cross to the extent that he was exalted above everything and given a name above every other name. But I say, he earned it. Make no mistake. Oh yeah, he earned it. Make no mistake. You earn your reward. Your investment now, or your, the, what you are looking at, will determine how you invest now. So Jesus obeyed the Father and died on the cross and cashed his check. The Lord of the earth. And he says, you will inherit that with me. If you overcome. If you invest now. In Hebrews 2 verse 4, it says that, it, it, well, beginning from verse 1, it says, we are surrounded with this cloud of witnesses of all these great prophets who did great things in the past. It says the world was not worthy of them. They slept in, in holes 
<laughs> prophets today don't sleep in holes, do they? I wonder what prophets are. Yeah. But anyway, it says that being surrounded by this testimony, let us throw off the sin that's so easily entangled. What is that darkness in your life that is holding you back? That you cannot run the spiritual race with rigor and passion. And say, set that aside and look forward to Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. Now listen. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross? Don't miss that. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross? So if the joy before me is a $50 million mansion, and God is asking me now, you're going to go naked, you're going to go hungry, and that's your investment to win that, I will endure that. It is the reward, the dividends that you perceive that will determine whether or not you will persevere now and invest and work. Jesus did. That's why in the book of Revelation, there are specifically 12 promises. 12 promises to those who will overcome. Listen, to those who will overcome. He didn't just say to believers. No, he said to those who will overcome. I focus on three of them. <laughs> I focus on three of them. Revelation 2, 26 to 28. He says to him who overcomes, I will give the right. To him who overcomes, I will give the right. To rule over the nations. You want to be an ambassador to China for Jesus? You have to invest now for Jesus. You have to surrender now to him and sacrifice and live and serve him now. Yeah. Then you will be his ambassador to China wherever. Because he is the king of kings. The throne of Jesus is higher than the White House. The throne of Jesus is higher than the United Nations whatever. He is the king of kings. The lord of the earth. And he says, I will give you this same power. Do you understand me? Do you understand that? Amen. So what is it that is holding you back in this life now to invest in the kingdom of God? What is holding you back? I want to be an ambassador of Jesus to Great Britain. I say, hey, you listen what? I represent the king of kings. Here, listen. And then in Revelation chapter 3, verse 21, it says, to him who overcomes, I will give people. Do you really understand that this Bible is God's book? And that what is written there is true? Yes. Do you really believe that Jesus is true? Yes. Do you? Yes. This is what he's telling you. To him who will overcome. I will give the right to sit with me on the throne of my father. Amen. Just as I overcame and sat with him on his throne. So... <laughs> If he is giving you his throne, and you know that he owns the whole world, seriously, there is something in this world that is attracting you better? Really? Mm. Really? Mm. Unless you don't believe. Unless you don't believe. What are you overcoming? The flesh. The flesh. The world and the devil. We we'll expand on that. I actually expand a lot on that on my YouTube, and you can go and watch it and see that. You have to overcome the flesh. The flesh. By personal growth, spiritual growth, you have to cherish this book. You have to listen to this book. You have to read this book. You have to study this book. You have to delight in this book. You have to meditate on this book. And you have to obey and practice this book. And you have to share it to other people. And let me just handle the word delight. How many of you here are married? <coughs> Put your hands up. Have you ever spent a day thinking about your wife or husband for the night? Go ahead. Put your hands up. Come on. Don't, don't try to pretend. I don't do that. Have you? question again. Have you ever spent the day from morning to evening in the office thinking of how you're going to impress her tonight and she'll be in your hands? Have you ever done that? No. <laughs> hey! The whole day. <laughs> hey! This man, you need to be taught the basics of marriage. <laughs> it's called delight. Delight. 
Delight. And you say, delight yourself like that in the Lord. From morning 2 a.m., wake up, he's there. Your wife will not be there at 2 a.m. At 4 a.m., you wake up, Jesus will be there. Your wife will not be there or your husband. He said, delight yourself in the Lord. He will grant the desires of your heart. In Psalms 1, 1 to 3, he said, blessed is the man who does not walk with sinners or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, but he's delight. Yes, man. His delight, his pleasure is in the word of God and in it he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Mm -hmm. And everything he does prospers. And you wonder why you're not prospering. Because you don't delight in God, you delight in something else. See, the thing is, God is not stopping us from having any delight or pleasure. But you have to seek the kingdom first. And then you can understand. Is it worth your time? I am not shooting for the stars. I am not aiming for the moon. I am not aiming for the sun. I am aiming for the throne of God. And everything it takes to sacrifice and surrender to be there, that is my prize. I'm aiming for, I was aiming for the tender. Uh, million mansion, but he mentioned 50, so I'm aiming for 75 million dollar mansion. <laughs> for real. Yep. May the power of God rest with you. Amen. It's called sacrifice, it's called surrender, it's called investment spiritually for what you are going to sow that you will rip. If you sow to the flesh, you will rip destruction. If you sow to the spirit, you will inherit. Glory, you will be an ambassador of the king. You will sit on the throne of God, 